Good afternoon. Thanks for joining CNT Collectibles. Today we are going to wrap up our series on long-term investments with the pitchers. And what we try to do in this series is identify players that are on a track for eternal relevance one way or another. And there's a couple of ways that that happens. And the most common is to make the Hall of Fame. Your cards will always be desirable. People will always want them. And can we find players that are on the track for that? A Hall of Famer for the pitchers looks something like this. You can look at Cy Young Awards. You can look at strikeouts. You can look at wins. Uh, and one of the most common metrics and the starting point for me is wins above replacement. The average Hall of Famer for pitchers has a wins above replacement of about 73. And there are 65 members of the Hall of Fame. So I average all those together and you get about 73. Another way to be in uh, long-term relevance is to take a bunch of steroids and obliterate all the pitching records. So I'm not looking at anyone in particular here. And that's a little more less common. So we're going to focus to the Hall of Fame track on this one here. So... I have five pitchers today that I believe are on a Hall of Fame track. And what this does is allows you to buy their cards, put them away, never look at them again, and they can potentially hold their value over a long period of time. So we will start out with number five, and that is Mr. Jacob deGrom. So this is a, this is, he is, how about that? We'll go with that. We'll personalize this a little bit here. Jacob deGrom is a 32-year-old pitcher for the Mets. And thus far in his career, he's accumulated 38 wars, which means to get to that 70 war by about age 37 where pitchers kind of start to drop off they last a little bit longer than hitters uh it seems like on average when we did the hitters we were looking for roughly 60 war by age 35 and so we'll bump it up for pitchers because they go just a little bit longer and as my pitching coach once told me is they're a lot prettier as well so in his career he has two Cy Young awards three top five Cy Young finishes seven all-star games or excuse me, 70 wins and 1,359 strikeouts. So what we're looking for out of Jacob deGrom is to keep his pace up, basically. Can he double what he's done? Can he get close to that 3,000 strikeout mark where that makes a bit, a bit more of a no-doubt Hall of Fame entry? Can he get up to 250 wins? I think 300 wins are kind of gone now. So can we make it 250 wins? Can we get close to 3,000 strikeouts? And he'll need to double his statistics roughly, um, maybe triple the wins. That's going to be a, a, a tall task at age 32 if he's got another five or six years. And so he's got some work to do. He's going to have to be, let's see, he needs another 1,700 you know, strikeouts or so, call it 1,600. So eight years of 200 strikeouts. This is going to be a, a tall task for Jacob deGrom. Uh, he's been fantastic the last, um, really the last seven years with those with those All-Star games. But the counting stats are a little bit... Uh, are a little bit off and you can see that he's missed a he's missed some time here game started off just a little bit here but he's been pretty solid overall so is does he have the longevity to do this we'll see his psa 10 is 2014 um update series psa 10 is going to run you about 200 dollars, and a psa 9 is about 70 dollars. and so there's no relative value between those really what you're going to have to hope for is he solidifies this this track and then he can move up in price uh, to join some of these uh, these other guys that we're going to review in just a second here. So Jacob DeGrom is number five. Number four is Zach Grinke. Zach Grinke is a 37-year-old pitcher who's accumulated 72 war uh, with multiple teams. Mostly with the Royals and the Dodgers, a couple years with the Diamondbacks. So he's traveled around a little bit, and hopefully nobody holds the Royal years against him. Uh, off to a kind of a, a slowish start, but the talent was always there, and he's really put it together later in his career. But again, he is 37, 208 wins, 2,669 strikeouts. He does have a Cy Young to his name, two top five Cy Young finishes, and six All Star games. So as of right now, I think there's a number of people that would say, yeah, he's probably really close. If he can put up another you know, two two good years, he can hit that uh, 3,000 strikeout mark. He'll have upwards of 230 wins. He'll have the commensurate war. He's got the Cy Young. He's got the hardware. He's got the all-star games. And so I think there's a lot of value to Zach Grinke because he has probably done enough again a couple more years of doing what he's doing and and that should uh, that should probably do it his 20 his, his rookie card is a 2002 Bowman and a PSA 9 will run you about 120 to 200 dollars so that's kind of a wide range um, but there's not a lot of sales of this card so the PSA 9 was called 150 bucks which would imply about a PSA 10 which I found no information on of around 400 to 450 to 500 dollars which is in line with what a Hall of Fame offensive player at least 
would uh, would go for so uh as far as real relative value there isn't much there uh <laughs> but for a hall of famer you know that's what that's how it goes here uh, i'll be scoping a raw version of that card i think i have a paper somewhere but anyways move on to number three and that is max scherzer Max Scherzer, let me highlight him here so I can read off my, there we go. All right, Max Scherzer is a 36-year-old. So you can see how these pitchers are effective into their later years. Who's got 175 wins, 2,700, 2,784 strikeouts, three Cy Youngs, three top top five Cy Young finishes, and seven All-Star games, excuse me, seven Cy, Cy Young, uh, top five Cy Young finishes, and seven All-Star games. He needs to average with the 62 war accumulated so far. He needs to average just over five uh, to get to that 70 war by age 30, 37. So, you know, in the next couple of years, if he can have a couple five one seasons, which he's been doing, he's been a terrific player. He's been able to do that. So if he can just keep up the last couple of years and do that again over the next couple, it'll bring him up to about, you know, 38 years. But people have been effective up until that age. And, uh, you know, he, he should have the bona fides to get in there. He'll have over 200 wins. He'll have over 300 strikeouts, three Cy Youngs. Um, you know, again, you know, the, the, the top five finishes, the All-Star Games, everything lines up for Max Scherzer. So now we're getting into, you know, as long as things go swimmingly for the next couple of years, mortal lock territory here. So his 2008 update series card. Uh, in tops update series will go for in a PSA 10 will go for $400 a PSA 9 will go for about a hundred bucks so you know the the PSA 9 should probably be maybe just a little bit more and overall as he reaches kind of the lock territory maybe he's upwards of a five or six hundred card overall so um, there's some value to uh, to the Max Scherzer card with the update series it's a little lower print run so we'll see how that how that kind of affects things but Max Scherzer uh, again, he's our, our, our third best. And don't take the rankings in here. We're just looking for on the track. So the rankings, you know, don't put too much into them. But uh, he is number three. And again, we're getting into lock territory, as you can see with the next two. Number two is Justin Verlander. All right, Justin Verlander, been around for a long time, and really, once he started to put together, there hasn't been any, there hasn't been any stopping him here. So he's a 37 year old. Now he got hurt last year, so we'll see if he's able to come back. But even if he isn't, what he's done thus far might be enough to uh, to get the job done here. So he's a 37 year old who's accumulated over 71 more. So he is right there with the average of the Hall of Famer in terms of that. 226 win, 3,000 strikeouts, two Cy Youngs, eight Cy, top five Cy Young finishes, eight All-Star games, and his tops rookie is the uh, 2005 tops. So uh, when you're looking at all the when you're looking at all the metrics here, all the bona fides, um, he's he's in. <laughs> that then that's about all there is to it. We don't have to say a whole lot more here. So uh, his 2005 tops rookie will go for in a PSA 10 about $330. The PSA 9 will be about $70. So there's some relative value there. This should probably be a little over a $100 card in the PSA 9. And the Raws you should be able to get for 30 or 40 bucks. So if you're looking for something like that, there's a nice Chrome version, and those are usually in pretty good shape and so that's the uh maybe the direction you want to go if you don't want to shell out the big bucks for that one but with his kind of his lock status you know perhaps that card should be five or six hundred dollars who knows um but it's all relative to the other ones but justin verlander again uh in that uh, that top three mortal lock territory he should be uh he should be joining cooperstown uh in the first or second round first or second ballot after he retires all right we'll move on to the number one pitcher overall on the long-term tracker and that is clayton kershaw probably no surprise there so clayton kershaw is 37 year old as well with justin verlander and the uh, statistics are pretty similar on him so let me just see if oh, excuse me he's 32 years old and i was looking at the wrong one here my apologies so uh, i've been off a few day, few days and still feeling it just a little bit here so he's just 32 years old he's got 69 war and you would say if he can pitch in the next you know five years at a, a level resembling what he's been doing even if he drops down to a three or four win player um, you're looking at an 80 plus win wins above replacement player and he's already done likely enough to get in you know, really really close and so uh, another five years it would be a uh, would be a bonus adding adding uh, adding a lot to his uh, his accolades here so 69 war 32 years old doesn't really have to do much to uh to to get to that 73 war over the next couple of years 175 wins 2500 strikeouts three cy youngs seven top five cy young finishes and uh and a number of all-star games as well so uh his tops rookie is 2008 update series along with max scherzer and his psa 10 goes for 800 dollars, and his psa 9 goes for 220 dollars. now this is the lock of the lock and so 
of all the locks. So the the eight hundred dollars, whether or not that's fair, the two hundred and twenty dollars kind of lines up with the three to one three to one ratio. So everything, you know, if, if that's a fair price, then there it is. <laughs> um, and when you put it relative to the other players, it seems expensive, but also he's more of a no-brainer than a lot of the others. So we'll move on to the spreadsheet and see if we can find who might be the next people down the road to make this list. All right, at the bottom of the list are a couple of players that are retired. They're going to have serious consideration. Kurt Schilling should probably make it in uh, one of these years here. So he had you know, over 3,000 strikeouts, over 200 wins. He has the commensurate war, uh, four top five Cy Young finishes, six All-Star games, you know, World Series hero, all that kind of good stuff here. He was in the Topps junks wax era, junk wax, junks, junk wax era. So his rookie card shouldn't uh, shouldn't have to shouldn't cost you a whole lot here. CC Sabathia is a, another one that has, you know, 3000 strikeouts, 250 wins. The war is a little bit light, but he's a Yankee, so Cy Young award, five top 5 finishes in a number of All-Star games. You can get his PSA 9 for about 40 bucks. You can get his PSA 10 for around $100. So it's kind of interesting to see what is going to happen to the prices of these guys. Now, perhaps there's shorter print especially in the update series. But when they're getting compared to these Hall of Famers, once the hype is passed, do they fall back down into this area? And so that's something to hold their value better than a lot of players, but are they going to hold this value? So that's something that'll be interesting to see uh, going forward. All right, Bartolo Colon. It's just not going to be a, a list without putting Big Sexy on here. So Bartolo Colon, he was uh, he pitched forever. And um, he, he had about 240 wins, 2,500 strikeouts. Cy Young, a couple of sci-fis. Or sci fives in a, in four all star games, and he probably doesn't make it in, but it's just not going to be a list without at least mentioning big, sexy Bartolo Cologne. All right, moving into guys that could probably do something down the road here. And really, the guys that uh, that you're looking at are some of the younger guns that are, you know, when you're looking at Hall of Fame trackers, when you're looking at guys on the path, there's a couple things that you're looking for. You're looking at getting started early and producing once you get started. And so a lot of guys can be on the path, but can they sustain it? And that's why I picked uh, some of these guys here. And not looking at like the Barrios, looking at the Beaver, like the Flaherty. We need to see more out of those guys. So uh, players that could possibly do something, you look at Trevor Bauer, and he's a 30-year-old. Now, in the red doesn't mean don't invest. It just means here's what you should maybe pay because they're not up in this area. It's not as much of a lock here. So Trevor Bauer, amazing season, 1.73 ERA, but his fielding independent pitching and, and XFIP were much higher. He had a high left on base. So look for some regression out of that one. He's got an all-star game. He's got a top five Cy Young finish. He's got a Cy Young. Um, but he's got a lot of work to do. He's age 30. He's going to have to average seven wins per year up to age 35 to get to that, to get to that, you know, 70 area here. So, um, 2020, 20, excuse me, 2012, uh, um, rookie card and a PSA 10 is going to run you about $65. So the market is saying, you know what, um, you know, maybe it's a, but it's a real, real outside chance here. Same with Steven Strasburg, who's been pretty terrific, but he has missed uh, time in his career and he got hurt again last year. Sounds like he's ready to go for this year, uh, but again, 32 years old, he's going to average nearly seven war per season. He's got a, a, a number of wins. The strikeouts look amazing. Can he find health over the next five years and do what he's done over the past couple, couple uh, top five finishes? all-star game the market doesn't believe that he can do it and you can get his psa 10 for about 35 bucks in his 2010 uh, tops card here so uh, moving up into the tier of guys that yeah maybe they could get it done you already we've already looked at Degrom. you know you have garrett cole in here who's 26 years old or excuse me 30 years old with 26 war he's averaged about six over the next seven years wins are there strikeouts are there uh top five finishes are there a couple of all-star games he could certainly you know, with, with the yankees with that offense, he could certainly get a lot of support. A hundred dollar PSA ten, thirty dollar PSA nine. So the market's warming up to him here. It was a lot higher earlier, but after this past season, I think he cooled off just a little bit, even though he had a pretty good season. So we'll see how that goes. But this might be an interesting play to see what uh, see what he can do over the next few years. You get into the Felix Hernandez, who's cooled off over the last few years here. Twenty five hundred strikeouts, one hundred sixty nine wins. He's got a Cy a Cy Young top five finish, a bunch of All Star games, but he's got work to do in the wins above replacement area here with just fifty. So he's going to have to be a productive player. I thought he was not that old. That's kind of crazy. He's been around forever. Um, 
So he's going to have to have some very productive years and pitch uh, and, and pitch effectively for another four or five years. Market doesn't believe he can do that. You can get his cards for pretty cheap. And this is why we do this exercise here, because Felix cards uh, at, at his peak were, were quite expensive. Um, and so those have come off quite a bit as, as his prospects have dimmed just a little bit. So you want to keep on top of this stuff here. Walker Bueller, um, terrific start, but he's a young guy. Let's see him. Let's see him keep doing it. So its cards are cheap enough they're not going to hurt you if you do anything with it jose bear same thing young guy um madison bumgarner is actually looking pretty terrific but the last few years he's really started to tail off just a little bit here 31 years old 37 more a uh, couple finishes couple all-star games in the market um is kind of recognizing that the last few years his numbers have started to decline so unless he can reverse that um he's going to not hold his well he'll probably hold that value <laughs> but if it's a 300 dollars card he's probably not holding that one so uh flaherty bieber you know, same thing. These cards are uh, are less expensive. A lot of recency effect for uh, for Shane Bieber here, but um, they're young and they don't have to do a lot uh, to get that WAR by age thirty by age thirty seven. So if they can just keep doing what they're doing, and we'll check back in with them on a yearly basis. But you know, in ten years, we'll have a uh, you know, well, you know, seven or eight years, we'll have a better idea of where they're at. So maybe these are the cards you look at now while they are inexpensive. Aaron Nolan might be the best of the bunch here. So uh, twenty seven years old, twenty one more, nine hundred and twenty two strikeouts. So. He's, uh, he's he's certainly on the path as well. He doesn't get mentioned with these guys, but he's right in there. And so these are these are kind of your prospects that you want to look for as well. Chris Sale's another guy. We'll see what he can do with his coming back for his Tommy John injury here. And then you've got your top three again. So the relative value of uh, Verlander, for some reason, is the cheapest. And maybe there's something to do with the print run, but who knows what that reason is. But uh, I think that's the one I'm going to look at the most. Other ones I'll probably just look at Roz. So anyways, that wraps up the, uh, the series on the 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 hall of fame track you know who's going to hold their value who could hold their value the best according to me which again look at my production value here <laughs> so how much are you going to put into that how much are you going to trust me on that one anyway so all right i hope you enjoyed the series we will do this again next year i've got a few things in store for uh, the next few weeks leading up to baseball but again always uh, appreciate you checking in stopping by and have a great rest of the day